And here at the Harper Library in the University of Chicago, our distinguished guests have their own ideas too. So let's join them now. It seemed to me he was saying that the golden age for America, when it was truly a land of opportunity, was the late 19th, early 20th century. No regulations, no permits, no red tape. I would argue that the government played a decisive role in an enormous grant to the railroads in creating an American capitalist economy. And secondly, if you go back to that golden age, you find that the government constantly intervened in a rather characteristic way. It used troops against strikers. Uh, American labor history has been the most violent, bloody class struggle anywhere in the world. And the government up until 1932, the law, the courts, the society, always uh, sided with business, always sided against working people. Therefore, I would argue that both economically and in terms of repressing the attempts of people to assert their freedom, uh, government prior to the rise of the welfare state in this country was more or less owned by business. Mildred Friedman. <clears throat> Michael Harrington is seeing the hole in the barn door and he's not looking at the barn door itself. The plain fact is during the whole of that period while government did intervene from time to time and mostly to do harm, I agree with him that government intervention was in the main not a good thing, tariffs for example. On the other hand, throughout that whole period government spending, federal government spending, central government spending never was more than 3% of the national income. It was trivial. The land grants to the railroads were a minor factor. I'm not, I don't approve of them. I'm not saying they were a good thing, but they were a very minor factor. One has to have a sense of proportion, and that goes to the whole discussion. I am not an anarchist. I am not in favor of eliminating government. I believe we need a government. But we need a government that sets a framework and rules within which individuals, pursuing their own objectives, can work together and cooperate together. And they work together and cooperate together not only in economic areas. Well, what you're... Michael Harrington? I, I just think that, that uh, two things. One, uh, to view freedom positively, I think people over 65 years of age in the United States today are freer now because of Medicare. I do not think that the freedom to die from the lack of medicine was a very good thing. Secondly, related to industrialists, uh, I uh, think that uh, one, of the, one of the startling things about American history is that when Franklin Roosevelt was saving the system from itself, the main beneficiaries were screaming bloody murder at him for being a traitor to his class when he was in fact the salvation of that class. And I think if you, therefore, if you look at our history, I do think you find a tremendous myopia on the part of industrialists and you find that the positive increments to our freedom, interestingly enough, have not come from the college graduates, but often from uh, people with, uh, not from the best people, it's come from working people, it's come from poor people, it's come from blacks and uh, uh, Hispanics and the like. Milton, would you reply, but then tell us why you took us to Hong Kong to prove something. Sure. Unaccustomed as I am to agreeing with Michael Harrington, <laughs> I will agree in part with what he's just said. I do not believe it's proper to put the situation in terms of industrialists versus government. On the contrary, one of the reasons why I am in favor of less government is because when you have more government, industrialists take it over, and the two together form a coalition against the ordinary worker and the ordinary consumer. I think business is a wonderful institution, provided it has to face competition in the marketplace and it can get away with something except by producing a better product at a lower cost. And that's why I don't want government to step in and, uh, and help the business community. Now, I want to go to your question about Medicare. There are many people who have benefited from Medicare, but you're not looking at the cost side. What has happened to the people who are paying for it? It isn't, we don't have a free good, it isn't coming from nowhere. And are they benefiting from it in a cost-effective way? Those are the questions. It's, it's demagoguery, if you'll pardon me, Michael, Michael Harrington, to say the people who have Medicare are freer. Of course, in one dimension. But they themselves have been paying all their lives. And have they gotten a good bargain? At the moment they have. The young men, the young working people who are going into Social Security now, they're going to get a very raw deal indeed. 